So if your needle is normally here, and then all of a sudden you notice that it's here and it really starts to climb, what should you do? Hi, I hope everybody had a good Christmas. I know I did, but I'm way behind on everything now. <laughs> We're gonna do a short video. This is something that's been on my mind for quite some time, and that is how a cooling system works on a vehicle and what are some of the related parts. I'm not gonna go into the electrical side of things. There's, of course, radiator fans and a coolant temperature sensor that tells the PCU to turn on the radiator fan. I'm not gonna go there or on the air conditioning and how it relates in it, but I'm just gonna go over some of the basics. Um, I recently did a water pump on my wife's nitro. I've got a repair video on how to do that and that'll be forthcoming. So the water pump is like the heart of the system. The water pump pumps the antifreeze to go through the engine and it gets some back pressure from the thermostat. So the thermostat is a mechanical device with a bimetal spring, which basically is just a spring with two different metals so it opens and closes if it's hot or cold. So the spring faces the engine where all the water heating or antifreeze heating is going on with the cylinders and the fire and the explosions and stuff. So that spring will contract when it gets hot and that opens up the pathway for the hot antifreeze to go out. So the water pump is creating the pressure at all times that the engine's running and then the thermostat will open automatically based on temperature, usually about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they're usually set for 180 or 195, something like that, but 200 is just an easy number to remember. So 200 degree antifreeze gets pushed out, it goes through the radiator, air moves across that, and it transfers the heat from the antifreeze to the air and just gets rid of it. And then the cooled antifreeze returns back in, usually in the bottom tank or the lower radiator hose. And that's not the case with everything, like the 4.7, the Chrysler. I'm not going to go into all kinds of details, basically. But this is just a general idea of how that works. So if your thermostat goes bad and stays stuck, it gives you the same effect as a water pump that's not pumping. I've seen broken plastic impellers on Volkswagens. I've seen corroded down to nothing impellers on Toyotas, you know, like steel ones where they never change the antifreeze and it got old and acidic and rusted everything out. Um, but basically, if you don't have coolant flow, you'll have one hose that's really hot and the other hose is just really cold. When this is working, they both feel hot to the touch, but that's one quick and easy way to check to see if you've got good flow. Um, and you may have an impeller that's missing or you may have a thermostat that's stuck. Either way, if you overheat, the end result's the same. Um, you see I've got lines coming out here to the radiator through the upper and lower radiator hoses and then I've got a couple other ones kicking out here to the heater core. Now the heater core is mounted behind the dash and it's a lot higher than the rest of the vehicle. Um, just like the engine is below your eye level and all that kind of stuff, uh, one of the highest things that receives antifreeze and flow from the water pump is the heater core. So what happened with our vehicle is that it was getting green puddles on the ground. So you see uh, number one, these are the symptoms or things that can happen as a result of a bad water pump. A water pump on one side is antifreeze and on the other side is a belt. So what happens is if you have a bad seal, the bearing that supports the shaft of it can get a bunch of coolant and rust and all that kind of stuff and fail and you lose your belt. Um, but like I say, aside from the green puddle, as soon as that level goes down, just imagine like w water levels in a hydraulic system always are the same. So if it's down to here, here, it's going to be empty at the heater core. So if your radiator's significantly low, you won't have any hot antifreeze to supply heat to the cabin. So you'll notice uh, heat loss, no heater. Um, what can happen is if you don't fix it and you leak out all of your coolant, you don't keep up on it, is you can blow your head gaskets. The head gaskets are basically, see this is a cylinder head, I'm just going to put a C and an H here, but this is your head gasket right there. So a lot of your cylinder heads are aluminum, so the pistons go in here, these are your cylinders, and then this is where all of your valves are, is in the cylinder head. So the cylinder head has to have coolant flowing through it and there's also coolant that flows on the sides of the cylinder. 
So this is where all the heat is. And of course heat rises and aluminum conducts heat really well. I mention that because cylinder heads are typically made of aluminum. So what happens is a, there's a seal between those two. It's usually made out of lead or steel plates or something like that. And those can fail. If those fail, then the antifreeze and the oil mix and it can ruin your engine because the lubricity of the oil just goes And the reason why is that it just it congeals. It's like this lumpy chocolate milk consistency and the teeny tiny little holes and passages where the oil gets pressed through get blocked with that and then you lose the engine. So you know head gasket failure and ultimately engine failure. So if you have a green puddle that's a big warning sign that you need to do something about your water pump. It could be your your coolant hoses to your radiator. We call these radiator hoses, water pump, um, heater core, and these are the heater hoses, of course. And this is the most important part. I'm saving it for last. So I'm glad you stayed tuned. Good for you. So if your car starts to overheat and you go to look at your gauge, um, gauges are usually shaped something like this. And then there's uh, an H and an L. And there'll be a key sticking up out of some water. <laughs> that's, a therm that's a thermometer, basically. And the thermometer's in the water. It's the water temperature, the antifreeze, coolant temperature, all synonymous. Uh, incidentally, your coolant should be 50-50 um, antifreeze, which is uh, ethylene glycol. You know, we got all kinds of new stuff now, but basically that, and then 50% water. So people call it water, people call it antifreeze, people call it coolant. South of the border they call it anticoagulante. Oh man, so many tangents. My apologies. So if your needle is normally here, and then all of a sudden you notice that it's here and it really starts to climb, what should you do? And this is a point where you share this with your friends and family so that they know, so that they don't have these things happen. Uh, what should you do? Um, you should pull over and let it cool down. If you think, here's what people usually do, it starts to do that and they're like, oh no, let's race home. Well, if you race home and there's no coolant, then that heat is going to be generated in the engine and basically cook your seals and cook your gaskets. Everything that has a shaft, camshaft, crankshaft, uh, water pump shaft, camshaft seals, like all these kind of things are going to be cooked and they're going to leak anywhere that you have a joint in the engine like your oil pan gasket or your head gasket or your valve cover gasket your water pump gasket all of these kinds of materials get cooked and leak well can you imagine how much it is to replace a water pump and a valve cover and a head gasket and an oil pan gasket i mean these are usually average about a, at least 110 on a lot of stuff, valve cover gaskets, you know, even on a really easy four cylinder engine, they're still like 80 bucks, 120 bucks to do a valve cover gasket. Prices vary based on who's doing the work and all that kind of stuff and what vehicle it is. But I'm just saying the money adds up really fast. So if you've got tons and tons and tons, of, when you see the H, don't think H, think dollar signs. <laughs> this could be really expensive. It'd be cheaper to call a tow truck, have them come pick up the car and haul it off than for you to keep driving with it hot. I hope this video hits home for some folks and uh, is some good useful information. I answer a lot of questions online in the comment section and sometimes in the Facebook page. So I just figured I'd take this opportunity to do a whiteboard videos are so easy. I'm not gonna lie, they're a piece of cake. <laughs> so I was gonna do a whiteboard video and hopefully this will reach some people. So anyway, if you like the video, you know what to do. Click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. And just thank you for watching my videos and supporting my channel. And uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. I've got Hopefully I'll have a sponsored video up and running. Uh, the folks at Escort sent me a radar detector. They got a new one that's called the 360 Max. Um, so I've been doing a whole bunch of filming and testing. And I've shot it with K-Band. <laughs> over and over again. It should be a pretty good video, so tune in to see that on Wednesday. Cheers. How fun is that? It's got a fancy new screen on it. It works with an application, and the newest feature, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's got arrows. It tells you where it's coming from, so we're going to shoot it right in the back, and you see that it just stays on with that back arrow.
And then if you shoot it from the sides, it does it in the sides and then from the front. Pretty cool, huh? So I'll go into some more detail on that on Wednesday. And uh, thanks to Rick Affix for the sticker. I got this on Christmas Eve. That was kind of fun. I was heading out to the desert and stopped by to check the P.O. box. And I uh, found this little gem. Look at that. See, it says ugly on the license plate. <laughs> Happy mechanic in the background. Pretty cool. Looks like one of those uh, steampunk project kind of cars. Mm -hmm.